I've told the story countless times. I've told the story so many times that it no longer caught onto my throat as I spoke. I've told the story enough times for it to be at the tip of my tongue and apparent on my teeth and carry it along with every breath that I breathe. I cover my head with a blanket, forgetting that it would not turn into a shelter of the ceiling and the walls decide it's time to crumble on our heads. It's okay to forget. You tend to be forgetful in times of war. What is it? What is it that's making me this scared now that wasn't here before? It's not my first time being paralyzed and crammed in this narrow corridor, but now the shaking walls, now the gunshots, nor the cannon blasts to scare me this much back then. So what is it now that's making, telling my head to spin and my blood to freeze and forces my heart to skip its beats? I guess it's the pace. Those mechanical birds that bode demise flew over your head and before your eyes. Those mechanical birds that bode demise flew over your head and before your eyes. They filled your chests with fear and terror and bought you death like it was no error. Those birds of metal with death for feathers and explosions for songs that blew at your weather, they reddened the skies as if the skies had bled, and they filled your air with the smell of dread. And they sang, they whistled from afar as they flew towards you, and when you felt them above, you didn't know what to do, so you closed your eyes and recite a prayer, and you hope silently that you're still there, because you really can't tell. There's a ringing in your ear and you cannot hear, and the corridor is dark and you cannot see, your limbs are numb and you cannot feel and your nose is filled with this gunpowder spent and you cannot smell silence. The whistle goes far and then even further or maybe it was I that went away. I always wondered if I'd hear the sound of the crashing of the, the sound of my bones crashing and the mashing of my heart and the blood of my veins sticking outside my skin. I always wondered if I'd feel my muscular tissue is being shredded apart and my ribs breaking out of my chest whereas the missile that I kill you is like a bullet through your head would go through in silence. The explosion blows my train of thoughts up and slams me down on earth. I'm alive, I've heard, and I hear. I hear the sound of the missile collapsing with the ground. I hear the sound of the explosion colliding with the mountains all around and the mirrored echo shaking the walls of our house. The vibrations on our windows make cracks in them that I can hear as I also hear my heartbeats quickening. My little sister who's clinging to my legs' heartbeats quickening. My sleep pretending brother's heartbeats quickening too and my terrified mother heartbeats quickening. Oh God, I can't hear my prayers, so can you? Tell me what to do. What is it that quickens our heartbeats so much this time that wasn't here before and we can't ignore? Is the planes. It must be the planes, I guess. See, in this narrow corridor, there is a door that takes you out to the fifth floor. And I think about what lies outside. If my neighbor's kid are this terrified, did they sleep? Or are they like me? They failed when they tried. See, thinking too much was my crime, and the explosion caught me off guard this time. Dear God, we're afraid of death. My mother recites Quran verses beneath her breath. I think, and so the explosions catch me off guard and I think, and I stop thinking on my own and I tell myself to anticipate the next explosion for, I, for it not to make my heart fall apart, but it does. My heart falls to my lower limbs. My feet swell and I feel the pulse in my toes. My heart gets up, pulls itself together, collects the shattered pieces and climbs up my bones. What do I do? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, Christ a hundred times and it's a thousand shame on me see our prophet said that a believer does not allow himself to be stung twice and one from the same hole and i'm afraid this war is taking my faith away so i wrote that poem on a cold night of friday march the 27th 2015 my brother and I had just returned home after being held hostages by Houthi militia for being from a country that is one of nine states that announced its participation in the Saudi-led operations in Yemen, Azafat al-Hazm. See, just as the instructions came on the radio, 
all, fam all four members of my family were stacked in this corridor that is four by two meters in very poor circumstances. The electricity was gone, the sinks were drained out of water, and the explosions had deafened our ears and we couldn't hear anything. I remember being crawled up on the corner of that corridor with my terrified shaking legs, using a torchlight to write down on my dairy books, trying to distract myself from the fear and the terror by the operation of seeking metaphors, forging rhymes. It's always been that to me. Ever since I was in second grade, I always made use of whatever unfortunate events that occurs in my life to fill in this collective memory of mine as fuel that I'm yet to use for further creation of art and writings. I came to Sudan on May 2015, that being a very unexpected turn of events in my life. I just came out of a sudden, I didn't expect that to happen. And I had to leave the city that I was raised in for 17 years to a city I was always told that is where I truly belong. See, the way I left Sana'a, it was truly dramatic. A 19 hours car ride to 34 military checkpoints and possible war zones and tribal bandits that stood by the sideways to stop the families fleeing the cities from leaving them without prying or whatever those, little, those families could fetch from the houses before leaving. Not only was the entire journey nauseatingly bizarre, tiresome and dreamlike, but the fact that I had just left my house, my room, my education, and my cupboard, my everything behind in the house my family lived in for the past 25 years, and I was never coming back to any of that, was, and honestly still is, very hard to comprehend. See, I believe that one reason I didn't go absolutely crazy, being overwhelmed with the thought that control is an illusion and that I have nothing in my hands to do, that no matter how much I try, no matter how hard I work, something is going to happen, I'm going to lose all of that. See, there's a sense of detachment that you develop when you go through uh, such a strong, when you go through such a strong, sudden change of faces, lifestyle, and places. One reason I didn't go crazy with all of that is that I was introduced to the amazing art of spoken word poetry. See, spoken word poetry is a phrase that refers to all types of poetry that is recited aloud. That includes jazz poetry, hip hop, poetry readings, slam poetry, uh, even comedy routines and monologues. Spoken word poetry does not have a formal structure. It is free and the artist gets to do whatever they want to do. They got on stage and they use their musical rhythms, their linguistic skills to create a piece of art that is supposed to relate to their audience as much as it relates to the, the artist himself. The development of spoken word poetry, it was developed to... It's, it's always been there, but spoken word poetry in the form it is now, it was developed through the civil rights movements of the African Americans in the late 70s. So he used it as a platform to reach out to the people out there, to make them relate, to have, to gain their empathy, and to support one another. Spoken word poetry now is one of the most common platforms that people stayed out there for and it's everywhere it's in poetry houses in poetry venues in coffee shops everywhere there are poets speaking out talking about their personal struggles or whatever matters that society might suffer to reach a certain to express about 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 issues that the entire society might undergo and our, our society has been on its toes for in the past decade, like racism, women empowerment, wars, famines, and maybe as it gets, as, 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 as simple as it gets when, it, when expressing human emotions, celebration, grief, or love. See, poetry is my outlet of choice. I chose poetry to tackle down those persistent nightmares and those constant thoughts of the traumatizing war experience. But I understand that not, not all of you might like poetry. Poetry might be my thing, but nothing is everybody's thing. However, in a city like Khartoum, 
it is very hard to be a student or an employee. You wake up in the morning, you have to worry about school, your work, your finances, how to get to your school or work. You have to worry about your family obligations. You have to worry about the huge gap between you and the society around you. That's why we end up running around chasing after stuff without giving ourselves the simple, the most of simple moments of relief. Thing is, you deserve, and you don't have to, you deserve finding your own creative outlet. You deserve seeking whatever hobby of that, a hobby of yours that you long ago dropped because you thought was silly, and practicing that. Try scheduling sometimes for you, some time for yourself to find something that you find stress relieving. That is miraculously amazing, and it is miraculously helping for you to move on and to create something that not only helps you, but the society around you. But you know what truly silly is? What's being silly is us right now being on Anto to pilot, worrying onto each other, pumping into each other without giving ourselves a moment to stop and think about how creative we could be. We don't use the most simple of our creative energy and we just allow our minds to be mushed by the stress and fear and anxiety that, that is consumed for all of the society around us without utilizing all of that for creation. See, my name is Muhammad Uthman. People call me Gaki. I write and I paint. And I will continue to do that. And I will continue to do that for as long as I can. Because, you know, I believe that I'm one of the most unlucky people on earth. I might also, my life is just a sequence of terrible events that's been occurring, but I'm okay with that. I'm at peace with all of that because no matter how much of a bad day I have, I can always go back home, pick up my pen, and see how sharpened my words has become, how brighter how my colors have become, and how stronger I am. I vow myself, I vow to myself that I will continue to do that to remind myself that no matter how down I feel, and no matter how helpless I am, and on days where I feel like my body is a vessel that would not settle down for my soul, I can grab my pen, and I can write, and I can paint, and that will grant me the power to express, to impress, to change, to alter, to control. Thank you.